the Joan Davis Show. I Married Joan, America's favorite comedy show. Starring America's queen of comedy, Joan Davis, as Mrs. Joan Stevens. And featuring Jim Backus as Judge Bradley Stevens. And you mean you can actually fish off the back porch? Absolutely, and you can go hunting in the front yard. I tell you, Judge Stevens, it's the kind of mountain cabin anyone would be proud to own. Okay, it's a deal. Eleven hundred dollars. Well, there goes the last of the money my wife and I have, and our life can be beautiful fun. I beg your pardon. Oh, oh that's what we call it. It's money we save to buy something that will make life more pleasant for both of us. It's uh, <laughs> sort of a joke. Oh, I see. <laughs> Incidentally, if there's any reason you're not satisfied with the cabin, I'll be glad to give you your money back. I can always find a buyer at that price. Oh, no, no. Don't worry, Mr. Tuttle. I'll love it. So will my wife. Mrs. Joan Stevens. Well, there you are, Mr. Fenster. That's all the money that my husband and I have in our Life Can Be Beautiful Fund, $1,100. Well, I must say you're getting a great buy, Mr. Stevens. You're getting a motorboat that cost me $3,000 only two years ago. Oh, I know it's a bargain. And my husband will just be delighted. <laughs> Joan. Joan, Joan. Ahoy there, mate! Give the sail and binnacle a compass. And you haul me for a swab if I don't like the cut of your jib. Jolly, what on earth? Brad, have I got a surprise for you? And have I got a surprise for you. You remember Mr. Tuttle's mountain cabin we always wanted to buy and he wouldn't come down on the price? Oh, Brad, forget about the cabin. I've got something to tell you. Well, well dear, I can't forget it. You, you see, I, I bought it. <laughs> Yes, yes, I bought it. Eleven hundred dollars from our life can be beautiful fund. I gave him the check this morning. You did? Eleven hundred dollars? Yes. Well, Joni, what was your surprise, and why are you wearing that costume? Oh, well, that, that, that's a surprise, dear. The, the girls are doing a play. Oh, oh, what is it? Uh, pinafore? Yes, that's right. Pinafore. And I had the cast. I'm sort of a pinhead. <laughs> Well, I'll wash up for dinner, dear. Just imagine a mountain cabbage. Hi, Brad. Hi, Brad. Johnny. Is anything wrong? Oh, no. No, no. Brad just bought a mountain cabin, that's all. Well, that's wonderful. Now you have a boat and a cabin. You can divide your time between them. The only time I'll be dividing is between Alcatraz and Leavenworth. The boat and the cabin were both paid for with the same $1,100. Oh, my goodness. Send people in jail for that, you know. But Brad's just as guilty as you are if he wrote one of the checks. They don't send judges to jail. Johnny, there's only one thing left for you to do. You've got to talk Brad out of that cabin. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll talk him out of the cabin. Uh, Johnny, where are my high-top shoes? Did I leave them in the garage? Brad, I I've been thinking. Oh, good. Uh, Brad, I, I think that you shouldn't have bought that cabin without consulting me. A after all, our vacation fund, we were partners, you know. Johnny, what are you talking about? We both agreed a long time ago we wanted a cabin if we could get it at our price. Yes, but there are a lot of other things that we could have bought with the money. Like what? Well, like a boat, to mention one. A motorboat, you know. Oh, Johnny, no, no, don't be... No, that's out of the question, dear. Out of the question. Well, all I know is that you had no right to buy this without talking it over with me. After all, do you think that I would do a thing like that to you? No. Well, you're darn right I wouldn't. Well, so I insist that you call Mr. Tuttle and tell him that you've changed your mind. Well, Johnny, don't be unreasonable. I thought you'd be very happy about it. It was a joint account, and you had no right to buy the joint. <laughs> well, look, honey, Mr. Tuttle said if we didn't like the place, he'd give us our money back. So all we have to do is go up there and see if we like it. Okay, I don't like it. Call him. Call him. Now, look, honey, let's leave tonight and we'll spend the weekend up there. Honey, I know that you'll just fall in love with the place. Honey, I can save us a trip and tell you right now, I'll hate it. Call him. Well, Johnny, don't be unreasonable. Now, you come up there with me. Now, Brad, you see this foot? This foot will never set foot in that cabin. Neither will that foot. Never. Well, all right, 
dear, I'll, I'll go by myself. You don't want to go? That's all right with me. I knew you'd change your mind. I knew you'd stop being so stubborn. You always see my point of view. Lover. Brad. Yes, dear. I didn't change my mind. I'm not going with you. <laughs> yes. What? Why did you let me go on like that? Well, I may not like the mountain cabins you buy, but I sure love the way you kiss. Kiss me, Brad. <laughs> look, look, Joni. If you're not going away, then why are you you're packing that case? Well, if you can go to that mountain cabin, I can go away too, you know. <laughs> no, no, dear. Don't please don't try to stop me. It's no use. <laughs> Made up my mind. There's only one way you can change it, dear. Call off the cabin deal. What? No. Brad, I, I, I said I was leaving. Uh, aren't you going to say anything? Yes, yes. Where are you going? <laughs> where am I going? Yes, yes. Where are you going? Where am I going? Yes. I'm going somewhere where they appreciate a lovely, charming, attractive blonde who has lots of fun, has loads of personality, is a very good mixer, and is wonderful company on any occasion. And that's where I'm going. <laughs> Believe these are yours? Obviously. Brad, honey, listen. Call Mr. Tuttle and tell him you've changed your mind. Without going to the cabin for the weekend, nothing doing, Joan. No. All right. You go to the cabin, I'll go to Palm Springs for the weekend. Enjoy yourself. Oh, I will. Archie Teeter lives there now. You remember him, Brad? The fellow that was so crazy about me in school. Uh, he never married. But some of the girls say it's on account of me. Of course, I don't know if that's the real reason, but, Brad, Archie Teeter, remember him? Oh, yes, yes, he was in the office the other day. He's gotten very fat and he's bald, but he's still the same sweet, nice guy. He'll see that you have a good time, Joan. Brad, this is your last chance. Absolutely not. Well, there are other men in Palm Springs. Well, I'll just have to take my chances. <laughs> okay. That does it, Brad. I'm leaving. Don't, don't try to stop me. Well, don't worry, I won't. Goodbye. Goodbye. So long. So long. Off Peter Shane. Goodbye. <laughs> Brad, I thought you said you wouldn't try to stop me. What? Oh, it's all right, honey. You don't have to say anything. I'll stay. Tell you the truth, I wasn't going to leave anyway. I was just bluffing. Well, I am not bluffing. I don't care. I am going if I have to go by myself. Joan, no, I gave you a chance. You're just being unreasonable about the whole thing. Enough is enough. If you <laughs> Shut up. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. Hello. Finch's drugstore? The lozenges came in I ordered for my throat? Forget it. Uh, tell me, Mr. Finch, how are you fixed for blades? <laughs> yes, for the throat. <laughs> Well, I never thought we'd make it. Boy, is this place isolated. We're really in the wilderness. Do you think this is going to work, Joni? With two chicks out for the same money, it better work. Or I'll be the first person to go up the river in her own motorboat. <laughs> but don't worry. Mr. Tuttle said that if Brad uh, didn't like the cabin, he'd give him back the money. And we're going to make sure that he hates it. <laughs> Hello, 
Brad. Joni, what are you doing here? Oh, I just happened to be passing by, and I thought I'd drop in. You just happened to have an overnight case. Uh, what made you change your mind? Oh, honey, I realized that I was just being prejudiced and unfair, running down a cabin that I'd never even seen. So I decided to be open-minded and fair and let you see for myself what a crummy dump this is. Well, anyway, I'm, I'm glad you're here. Come on, Tom, let's take a look around outside as long as we're here. Okay, Bill. See you later. Okay, kid. Joni. I'm glad you're here. It, it gets awfully lonesome up here by yourself. I don't know how you can possibly say that, dear. Uh, you can always drop in on your next-door neighbors. I believe we passed their house about 35 miles back. Uh, no, dear, that's not what I meant with you here. The whole place seems different. I, I guess it just needs a woman's presence. Well, it certainly needs something, that's for sure. Well, Joni, uh, how do you like it? Van, I want you to know I have a perfectly open mind. Yes? I don't like to say this, but I don't think you made a very shrewd purchase. <laughs> uh, to put it delicately, you got stuck. <laughs> so what are you talking about? Well, take this wood. It's still got the bark on it. This is a log cabin. That's no excuse. <laughs> Look at that. They must have run out of logs and they left a big hole in there. Oh, Joni, this is a window. <laughs> oh, it is. Well, where's the curtains? <laughs> the curtains. Honey, let me show you one of the best features of this place. Y you know, I've always wanted a cabin in the mountains so I could go fishing. And, well, honey, now, now I've got one. You see? You can fish right off the back porch. That lake is so loaded with fish, they jump out of the water just begging to be caught. <laughs> What have you caught so far? Well, I haven't tried yet. Your line's wet. <laughs> what a place. Even the fish won't have anything to do with it. Well, Johnny, you can say what you like about this place, but you won't change my opinion of it. I like it. I'm going to keep it. I'm glad I bought it. And what's more, I am going to enjoy it. Okay, Bill. I sneaked the last bit of food out into my car. Good. Here's a can of juice you forgot. Whatever Brad can resist, he'll never be able to fight starvation. Are the holes in the roof drilled? Yeah, and I hit all the dry firewood, and they won't be able to get any new supplies. Without this rotor and the distributor, they can't start their car. Great. And just as soon as Brad breaks down and says he's calling off the whole deal, John can give it to him and they can drive home. Hey, I think they're coming. Well, give it to me. I'll put it in Joan's case. She'll be sure to find it there. Johnny, I told you there's no gold up here. Well, it's better to make sure, Brad. I'll bet there were thousands of guys just like you in Alaska that says there's no gold up here. All of a sudden, a gold rush. Shh, everybody's rich. There's gold in them there. You'll think. Johnny, enough. Oh, but this is the most ridiculous. Uh, well, uh, we've got to be going. Oh, you uh, kids leaving? Yeah. Uh, bye, Brad. Joan, have a good time. <laughs> Don't worry, we will. Drive carefully. Oh, home sweet home. Uh, Joni, there's uh, something I, uh, I want to uh, talk to you about. Huh? Um, what is it? Well, this cabin, it, it just isn't what I expected. It is? No, you see, I, I was too embarrassed to say anything in front of the kids, but, well, I give up. I love fishing, and I, I wouldn't consider a place with a lake with no fish in it. Are you sure there's no fish in it? Well, I'd take an oath on it. I've used every lure I got in the... If I can't catch them, they just aren't there. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's pack up and go home. Oh. Uh, all right, dear. Listen, I I'll go out and start the car. You know, it gets kind of cold up here in the mountains, especially if the sun goes down. You do that, dear. Why am I glad we don't have to spend the night here? <gasps> what a break. <laughs> What's that? A burden and greasy. <laughs> Joan, we're in trouble. The rotor from the distributor is missing. It's an old trick, so you can't start the car. 
Well, don't worry about it, Brad. I'm sure that Tom did it. I told him to fix the car so you couldn't get out of here until you realized of your own free will that you didn't like this cabin. You were... So I could... Why you... <coughs> Ordinarily, I'd be furious, but since there isn't any fish, I'll be glad to leave here anyway. Uh, where's the rotor? Where is it? Yes. Oh, I suppose he left it right where I'd find it the quickest. That's kind of a funny joke. You know, sometimes they leave it right under your nose. That's when you can't find it. The easiest place is... Don't worry, though. I know it's here. I told him I should fix the car. I won't start. Then I'll give it back. Sure. Isn't that funny? Uh, tell me, Ben, what does a, a rotor from a distributor cap look like? Is it a great big thing? No, 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 dear. It's made of hard rubber. It's, it's, it's round, it's red, has a brass point and a little hole. Oh, it yeah, it's probably out front. I'll, I'll go look. Yeah. <laughs> well, there goes the stool. Brad, I'm starved. You're starved? Ha! Bev and Tom took all the food. Thanks to you. Brad? Fish. Huh? Well, why should we be hungry? And there's a lake full of fish. Oh, man, a fish dinner. Oh, you're <laughs> yes. Wait a minute. Uh, hadn't you better let me? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Of course. <laughs> Oh, boy. It's a whopper, Brad. Go on, play it steady, steady, steady. That's don't worry, it. don't worry. I'll get him, dear. Come on, fish. Give up. You've met your master. Ooh, it's a big... Well, not like that. It's a coonskin cap. Let's cook it, Brad. Cook it? Well, you see, the tails are the best part. Stop it, Joan. Okay. All right, come on, Joan. Fish. Fish, will you? I'm hungry. Hey, Brad, I'll... Get one right away. Whoever these belong to must have forgotten to open his mouth when he threw the cigar away. Johnny, forget it. You're not going to catch any fish. They, they just aren't biting. I can't understand it. This lake is like a floating junkyard. Boy, I don't know why I've been so hungry. Well, honey, I, I couldn't catch a fish on a hook. Maybe I can lasso one. Well, you can't tell. Oh. Probably another rubber boot so you can have a pair. I don't know. Oh, oh my gosh, that uh, turtle. Oh, that's wonderful. Don't lose him. Don't lose him. Man, I told you I'd, I'd get something to eat. Oh, and how you did turtle soup, tear up and steaks. Yes, Johnny, I'll go put a pot on the fire. Oh, boy. Ah! Am I glad to meet you. Uh, you may not know it, but you are saving two people from starvation. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. Look, it's either you or us. Uh, anyway, you've already lived two or three hundred years. Don't be a pig. <laughs> Only got children, huh? I'll show you the greatest dinner that you ever... No, no, Brad. What? Well, she looked at me with those baby blue eyes, a look that said... Oh, Joni, this is ridiculous. Let me have that. No, Brad. If we eat that turtle, we'll hate ourselves in the morning. I know, but I'll be hating myself on a full stomach. Well, if you feel that strong about it, Brad, I'll cook it for you. Just leave the pot here. Uh, Go out uh, and get some more water. I'll oh, oh it. it'll be a labor of love. Right. No, I, I, I just can't do it. Look, look, you hide. That's a good girl. Something, something else. Hot water. No. Well, wait a minute. Rubber comes from trees. Apples come from trees. Brad likes apples. He ought to be crazy about this. I think it's all you never know the difference. Boy. Burned all the chairs in the bunks, but it'll be worth it. Oh, sure. Now the turtle soup is all done. Sit down, dear. I'll serve you. All right, you. dear. Oh. There we are. Hmm. Just the way I like it. Rare, tender little pink pieces. Nothing like this to warm a man's stomach. All right, you are. <laughs> Just a 
turtle to soup a little strange. <laughs> well, that's because you're used to ocean turtle, dear. This is lake turtle. It's a lot different. Well, why aren't uh, you eating it? Well, honey, I sampled so much, I'm full. Uh, I couldn't eat another bite. Really, I've been had it all through the time. It, it's tough, but but good. <laughs> So it is. Johnny, what was that I just ate? No, Brad, don't get excited. There's nothing to worry about. I like to worry. What was it? Uh, nothing, Brad, nothing. What? A hot water bottle. <laughs> but good. A hot water bottle. Now, Brad, will you please stop acting like you're poisoned, really? Did you ever hear of anybody dying from hot water bottle poisoning? Did you, the truth, did you ever hear of it? you fed me a hot water bottle to save that turtle. But we're going to have turtle soup. No, no, Brad, no, 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 here we are starving, the two of us, and you getting sentimental over what may have been our last dinner. Oh, I'm sorry, Brad, but I just couldn't let you cook it. And it felt like a murder. <laughs> Look! What is it? Why, it's a turtle egg. And she left it to show us how grateful she was. A turtle egg? So what? So we eat. I'll scramble it. It'll go further. Uh, stir up the fire, dear. Oh, oh. The whole egg, the whole egg. <laughs> <laughs> the whole egg, the whole All done. Sit down, dear. Oh, it'll be delicious. There we are. Some for you. Some for me. Well, mine. Hmm. Certainly is filling, isn't it? I just don't know if I'll be able to finish it. I probably won't be able to eat another thing all day. What's the use of kidding? I'm hungry. Well, I don't know how you can say that. You had just as much as I did. And goodness knows, I'm... I'm... I'm starved! Oh. <laughs> no, don't worry. It, it could be worse. At least we have a roof over our heads. Thank you.